Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera. Okay, today's session uh, supposed to be a tutorial session focus on answering the question that been proposed at the end of our previous lecture regarding uh, finding resistance using field theory approach and the structure is shown here and we have done uh, examples regarding resistance between surface z equal to zero and z equal to c but uh, in this particular problem is slightly different what we want to do here we want to find the resistance between r equal to ra so r equal to ra is located at this particular surface and r equal to rb is located at this particular surface therefore what you want to do you want to find the resistance between these two surfaces eh? so that's what our intention in this particular problem to find the resistance between the inner surface and the outer surface of the part of the cylindrical structure here okay so that's what we intended to do again so we want to use the formula uh, that we seen earlier based on field theory okay the formula is r equal to minus e dot dl and we divide everything with integration of sigma e dot ds and from the appearance of electric field parameter in this uh, particular equation, that's why we call this uh, finding resistance using field theory approach. Okay, so what we have to uh, determine from this equation, what should be the suitable E need to be substituted in this equation. Okay, so now the way... Uh, for me to determine the E by uh, redraw the problem into two-dimensional problem. So I mean by that, I'm going to uh, redraw in two-dimensional so that I can uh, develop the E diagram that I want to use in the uh, stated equation. So let's redraw it in two-dimensional problem. So this should be my uh, x-axis this should be my y-axis looking from the top now and then what we're going to have one a surface r equal to ra as shown here and r equal to rb as shown here so this is the uh, two relevant surfaces that we want to uh, focus on in order to visualize how the e profile should looks like Okay, so I'm just going to remind myself this particular surface is RA and the outer surface as stated in the question is RB. So how do we assume the E should be? Remember the, the, the way we always, uh, I mean in EMT, the way that I always use in a solving problem is based on fundamental approach. So for me, the E should be a line or the shortest line joining the two relevant surfaces. So the surfaces are, are R equal to RA and another surface is R equal to RB. What should be the shortest line joining these two surfaces? Should be this black line. Why am I saying that? that? Because the angle of this line to the surface always 90 degree. Okay, that's what I meant by the shortest line. Okay, so this particular part going to behave like this. So in this particular part going to behave like this. So the red line, sorry, the black line here is uh, my E field. So since it's a vector, I'm going to denote it to be like this. Eh? So I'm assuming my E is from the inner surface moving to the outer surface. You might assume in your particular 
case, you can assume it from the outer surface to the inner surface, doesn't matter. Eh? But yet, we must make sure it's a vector. Eh? So this is our, our E. Okay, that should be the first step when we want to determine the E. Okay, redraw the structure in two-dimensional, uh, focus on the two relevant surfaces, then we draw the shortest line joining the two surfaces. That shortest line is going to be our proposed E field. Okay, and this particular E field is going to be the one that we're going to substitute in our R equation. So that should be the objective or the flow. Then, the next issue now we have to ask ourselves, how can the E becoming like that? What should be the charge distribution that we should for propose in this diagram in order for us to have the E as such? Okay, so as what we have done before, we can assume on the inner surface, which is R equal to Ra, we can assume it is filled with positive charge. That should be one suggestion, okay? Okay, we can assume the inner surface is filled with surface charge. And the surface charge is denoted as rho s. And this rho s is going to produce the E as such. That's one uh, assumption that we can use for the source of the E field. Yet, if you extend the E field inner uh, towards inside part of the cylinder, what you can see if I extend the E field, I can see that all this E field actually converge to the Z axis. Okay, meaning that the Z axis is going to be the uh, focus point where the E come from. If you extend all the E from any part of this diagram, you extend towards the Z axis, you can see it's converged into that particular Z axis. Due to that reason, I can also assume if I let a line charge to appear along the Z axis, that structure or that charge also going to produce the E field as such. So meaning that there are two modes of source that we can propose in order to produce E configuration as what we wanted. The first assumption is by assuming surface charge is located on the inner surface of this structure where R equal to Ra. That should be one suggestion. Or the second suggestion that we can assume there is a line charge along the Z axis. That configuration also going to produce E to be as such. So meaning that you have two choices, okay? So for me, I'm going to uh, take the second source, okay? So I'm going to put some suggestion here. Assume the source is rho L, okay? Or line charge located along the z axis rho l is assume uh, is infinite okay that's what we're going to state okay so there are two suggestions we assume in our source that generating the e field is a line charge located where along the z axis and this line charge is infinitely large, meaning that is uh, the length of the line charge is infinite. Okay, that's what we uh, assuming now. Okay, so therefore, again, I'm putting forward a suggestion here where the source should be number two. Okay, I'm going to take number two as my source of the electric field. Okay, that's what we are suggesting here. Okay, once we have done that, what we have to do, we have to determine the E field due to the source. Okay, so I'm going to uh, continue now. So I want to find the E field now. So using 
Coulomb's Law. So please refer to example of infinite line chain number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, due to infinite line charge. We did that, I think. Uh, the, I mean, one of the questions we did regarding line charge. Yeah? Okay, that should be our E. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to recall. Let's say this equation number one. Oh, yeah? Okay, so that's recall number one. So what we're going to do, we're going to substitute E into that equation. So, so from one... So from equation 1, now we can say the R should be equal minus integrate. E should be rho L divided with 2 pi epsilon not R in R directions dot with DL. That should be the first substitution that we're going to do. Divide everything with since constant sigma can take out, so equal to E rho L over 2 pi epsilon not R in R direction dot with ds. Okay, that should be uh, the next step we should logically do. Substitute E with our proposed equation that we developed due to the assumption we made earlier. So now this should be the step we're going to face. As you can see from the equation, I need to substitute for the dl. Okay. Remember, this is cylindrical coordinate. So I can say to myself, dl can be replaced with dr in r direction plus r d phi in phi direction plus dz in z. That should be our dl. Standard uh, substitution based on cylindrical coordinate. So if still doubt, Please refer to your table of handout number two. Okay, so we did that together as well. How about the ds? Okay, remember the way we're going to visualize the ds, the area where the E penetrate normally to it. So this should be our ds. Okay, our ds should be the small area, the sample area where the E field penetrate normal to that sample area okay so if i redraw it on the 3d i can say my ds going to be this particular area okay so this should be our ds normal to the e field so therefore from the diagram we can say now the ds should be what here should be r d phi d Z in which direction? R directions. Okay? So that should be uh, the substitution of the DL and also the DS. Remember, everything must be uh, extracted from our diagram. We cannot memorize. Eh? We have to see the relevancy from the uh, diagram of our problem. Okay, let's simplify the mathematics now. So what should be... Uh, so, therefore, I'm going to use the space area here. Now, the R, okay, go, sorry, is equal to, okay, the R is equal to, okay, so DR and R, so I'm going to have it to be, Okay, first I can simplify the mathematics. How I do it, I'm going to cancel. Rho L, I cancel with the rho L here. 2 pi epsilon naught, I'm going to cancel 2 pi epsilon naught. I cannot cancel the R 
because there's an integration respect to us. So I have to leave the R there. Okay, so now I'm going to integrate the uh, upper part of the equation. I'm going to have it to be equal to ln. Okay. The limit from uh, Ra to Rb should be Rb over Ra. Okay, so that should be the case now. Is it true? Because usually we're going to take it uh, opposite. So the limit I'm going to choose here should be Rb, should be Ra. Is it correct? Because I purposely choose my limit to be opposite to the E field. Because the negative, okay? So when I change it to positive, so RB is going to be the upper limit. RA is going to be the lower limit. So I'm going to end with that uh, solution, okay? And for the DS, okay, we have to integrate twice here. First, phi. Phi should be from 0 to pi over 2. Why? Because uh, uh, the because the limit from x axis and is ending at y axis. So at x axis the phi is zero. Uh, on the y axis the phi is ninety degrees. Okay, and for the z should be from zero to to c. Okay, so let's uh, uh, do the. So now I'm going to divide everything with sigma. Okay, I, you can see I can cancel the R here. Okay, I can cancel the R. So the R we can cancel. So the R gone already. Okay, then we're going to integrate first. So I'm going to integrate with the phi. When I substitute, I'm going to have the end solution pi over 2. That should be the, uh, the product of integration of the phi. And for the z, I'm going to integrate, I'm going to have C. Okay, so therefore you can put uh, in a, a nicer form. It's going to be 2 ln bracket Rb over Ra. And you divide everything with sigma pi C. And the unit for this particular resistance is ohm. Okay, so that should be our solution for uh, the second problem that uh, been asked at the end of our previous lecture okay remember the method that we use uh, to solve this problem uh, is using field theory approach so it's important for us to determine the suitable of e and the way the way that i choose the e uh, first is simple to be uh, drawn how we how do i decide that by assuming the e is the shortest line joining the two relevant surfaces that where we want to find the resistance and then from the field uh, proposed i'm going to assume what should be the suitable source distribution and then i'm going to use my previous experience uh, dealing with coulombs and gauss I develop the suitable E equation. Then I substitute the E that been obtained into our resistance equation of field theory. Then from there, I choose the suitable of DL and the suitable of DS. Those must be extracted from our diagram then and with normal proper integration. Okay, so that should be the step that you try to always follow or do when you've been asked to find resistance using field theory okay so i think uh, for those who ask me uh, to solve this problem thank you very much so i've been mentioned that you did your uh, i mean you try to solve the problem but you don't feel confident whether your solution is correct or wrong so from here i hope that uh, you manage to have the same result as mine so with that, thank you very much. We're going to see you next lecture, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.